Gout. And what causes gout? Today, I'll be talking about a condition that's both common and painful. Gout. We'll go over what it is, what causes it, how it's linked to uric acid, and the different risk factors involved. Let's get into it. What is gout? Gout is a common and complex type of arthritis that can affect anyone. It's a painful condition caused by the accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joints. Gout most often starts in the foot, especially around the big toe, but it can affect any joint in the body. Common symptoms are pain, swelling, and redness at the affected site. The pain can make standing and walking difficult. What is the main cause of gout? The primary cause of gout is a buildup of uric acid in the blood, a condition called hyperuricemia. Thus, leading to the formation of urate crystals in the joints, causing inflammation and pain. What is uric acid? Uric acid is a waste product that our body creates when it breaks down purines, substances found in many foods, and in our body. Most uric acid dissolves in the blood and is then filtered out by the kidneys and excreted in urine. High levels of uric acid in the blood, called hyperuricemia, can lead to conditions like gout and kidney stones. Is it normal to have uric acid? Yes. Having uric acid in the body is normal. As it's a waste product created when the body breaks down purines. However, elevated uric acid levels, known as hyperuricemia, can lead to health problems like gout. Normal uric acid levels. In men, normal uric acid levels are generally between 2.5 to 7 mg per deciliter. In women, normal uric acid levels are generally between 1.5 to 6 mg per deciliter. How does uric acid cause gout? When uric acid levels are too high, it can form needle-shaped crystals that deposit in and around the joints, particularly in the big toe, but also in other joints like the fingers, knees, and ankles. The body's immune system reacts to these crystals, leading to inflammation, intense pain, and sometimes redness and swelling in the affected joint. Now the question arises, is hyperuricemia the same as gout? No, hyperuricemia is not the same as gout. Hyperuricemia means there's too much uric acid in the blood. But it doesn't always lead to gout. Hyperuricemia refers to a high concentration of uric acid in the blood, typically exceeding 7 mg per deciliter. Gout is a form of arthritis that occurs when uric acid crystals build up in the joints, causing inflammation and pain. While elevated uric acid levels increase the risk of gout, they don't automatically cause gout. Many individuals with hyperuricemia never develop gout, and some people with gout may not have hyperuricemia. So, can you have hyperuricemia without gout? Yes, it is possible to have hyperuricemia without developing gout. In fact, most individuals with hyperuricemia are asymptomatic and never develop gout or kidney stones. In asymptomatic hyperuricemia, many individuals with high uric acid levels don't experience any symptoms and may never develop gout. Besides gout, hyperuricemia is also associated with other conditions like kidney stones, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disease. For asymptomatic hyperuricemia, medication is generally not recommended. But lifestyle changes like diet and exercise may help lower uric acid levels. Since hyperuricemia is not the only cause of gout, we need to discuss the risk factors for gout. There are several factors that can raise your risk of developing gout. Family history. Gender and age. Chronic kidney disease. Dietary factors. Medications. We will discuss them in details. Family history. Gout has a strong genetic component, meaning it can run in families. Studies have shown that the risk of gout increases with the number of affected first-degree relatives, parents, siblings. The heritability of gout is estimated to be 65%, indicating a significant genetic influence. This means that individuals with a family history are more likely to develop gout, even if they have a healthy lifestyle. Gender and age. Gout is about four times more common in men than in women. It can affect men at any age, but the risk goes up with age. Women usually don't get gout before menopause. Men typically develop gout earlier in life, usually between the ages of 30 and 50. While women usually experience the onset of gout after menopause, which typically occurs in their 50s. Why do men have higher uric acid levels? 
men typically have higher uric acid levels than women, primarily due to hormones. Specifically, men tend to have higher levels of testosterone compared to women, which can influence uric acid metabolism. Testosterone is thought to play a role in elevating uric acid levels. Why is gout less common in females? Gout is less common in women than in men due to estrogen's role in lowering uric acid levels. Estrogen may have an inhibitory effect on the uric acid-generating enzyme, xanthine oxidase. The exact mechanisms are still being investigated. Women may have a higher capacity to excrete uric acid through their kidneys, possibly due to the effects of estrogen. This higher renal clearance could contribute to the lower uric acid levels typically observed in women. This protective effect diminishes after menopause, leading to increased uric acid levels and a higher risk of gout in women post-menopause. Chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease impairs the kidney's ability to filter uric acid from the blood, causing uric acid levels to rise. Elevated uric acid levels can lead to the formation of uric acid crystals in the joints and other tissues causing inflammation and the characteristic pain of gout. The prevalence of gout is significantly higher in individuals with CKD, especially those with moderate to severe disease. Chronic kidney disease and gout are interconnected. With CKD increasing the risk of gout due to impaired uric acid excretion, and gout potentially worsening CKD by causing inflammation and potentially kidney stones. Dietary factors. Foods high in purines, like organ meats, certain seafood, and red meats, are most likely to trigger gout. These foods break down into uric acid, which can build up in the blood and cause gout flare-ups. Alcohol consumption can raise uric acid levels and increase the risk of gout flare-ups. The more alcohol a person drinks, the greater the risk of developing or experiencing a gout attack. People with gout are often advised to limit foods and drinks high in fructose, such as sugary drinks, processed foods, and some fruits. Increased fructose intake can contribute to higher uric acid levels in the blood, potentially leading to gout. Medications. Certain medications can increase the risk of gout attacks or trigger them. These include diuretics. These medications often used to treat high blood pressure, can reduce the kidney's ability to remove uric acid from the body, leading to higher uric acid levels. Low-dose aspirin. While aspirin is a pain reliever, low doses can actually inhibit uric acid excretion, potentially raising uric acid levels and increasing the risk of gout. Niacin. Niacin, a form of vitamin B3, is sometimes used to lower cholesterol but it can also increase uric acid levels, especially in larger doses. Cyclosporine, this immunosuppressant, used in organ transplants and to treat autoimmune diseases, can also increase uric acid levels. Can gout medication cause gout? Yes, gout medications can sometimes trigger or worsen gout attacks, particularly in the initial stages of treatment. This is because as uric acid levels are lowered by the medication, Existing crystals in the joints can dislodge and cause inflammation, leading to an attack. Here's a more detailed explanation. Initial phase of treatment. When starting uric acid-lowering medications like allopurinol or febexostat, the uric acid crystals that have already formed in the joints may start to dissolve. This process can cause inflammation and pain, potentially leading to a gout attack. Increased risk of attacks. The risk of gout attacks is often higher in the first few months of treatment as the body works to clear out the existing uric acid crystals. Preventative measures. To minimize the risk of attacks during this time, doctors often prescribe low-dose colchicine alongside the uric acid-lowering medication. Colchicine helps to reduce inflammation and prevent attacks. Continue medication. It's important to continue taking the uric acid-lowering medication even if a gout attack occurs, as this medication is essential for long-term gout management and preventing future attacks. Therefore, it is very important to continue taking uric acid-lowering medication even during a gout attack. Stopping the medication can lead to a rise in uric acid levels, potentially worsening the gout attack and increasing the risk of future attacks. These medications are essential for long-term gout management by preventing new uric acid crystals from forming and dissolving existing ones. To wrap it all up, while there's no permanent cure for gout, with the right combination of medications, lifestyle choices, and self-care strategies like staying hydrated and applying ice, it's definitely manageable.
the key is knowing your risk factors, staying consistent with treatment, and making healthy choices. Thanks for listening.